please welcome Razor Azul to Cloud Computing West. Thanks so much. I hope my voice holds out. Sounds like we're all uh, suffering a bit from dry throat. Kwai O, the derivation of the name in Cape Town street parlance, Kwai means wild or angry, or it also means cool, in the same way that the word wicked means cool, and oak means guy. So together that means cool guy. So we're in the business of uh, helping startup companies, and through that we've become experts in the area of cloud computing. And today I want to talk about a particular area of elasticity we call hyper elasticity specifically handling spike events first of all what is elasticity I don't know if any of you recall sitting through your first physics lesson and maybe covering a law called Hooke's law which describes the property of elasticity how a system when subjected to a load can stretch or expand and then when the load is taken away it reduces typically the displacement is proportional to the amount of the load and so that analogy is brought to bear on cloud systems and the ability of a cloud to handle a varying load is called elasticity. This is a Google Analytics chart from one of our clients. It's an interesting study of how the traffic varies on a daily basis. It follows almost a sine wave. You can see it rises up here in the morning. It's probably got its low point at about 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. It doesn't go down to zero. There's still some people up actually ordering stuff. It's an e-commerce platform. It's crazy. But then very promptly when people come into work, it, it goes up. Interestingly here, that's Saturday, that's Sunday. And people typically take Friday, half day. And so for the traffic, you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, half day, Saturday, Sunday, not very much traffic. And there you can see a platform that varies maybe about an order of magnitude. From the low point, about 20 concurrent users, at the high point, maybe 200. Well, that's not a difficult problem to solve with the standard auto-scaling techniques that are available in cloud computing. So let's look at it in a lot more detail. Let's look at it over a 24-hour period. What does it look like? Well, here is a slice through a day, and that's how the traffic varied the day. As we said, in the small hours of the morning, it was at its minimum, and then it grows. So in the middle of the day, it's peaking. This particular platform is quite compute-intensive, so it required us to scale the array almost proportional to the traffic and there were some scaling rules here. This particular auto-scaling algorithm said that if all the nodes were to vote to increase for three successive minutes, then the array would double in size. It's quite drastic, but it gave us a very fast response and it filtered out some of the false positives. It would double in size until the page load time, which was the basis by which they voted, dropped down below the requirement and then it would vote to shrink. If any of them voted to shrink, we would drop the array size by 25%. A very simple algorithm, and you can see how the array size, the bar chart, varied in response to the traffic. Now let's look at what page load time did. Well, you see page load time, the green line, is actually quite noisy when you've only got one computer in your array. Well, you'd expect that to be, but it's also very low traffic, so the damage isn't that bad. And when you've got your peak load time, it's a sufficient response time. In fact, you probably want to bring that down to about two seconds, but it's doable. In fact, if you want to look at the page abandonment rate or the bounce rate, you can see that the target was to keep it under 25%. And that came from a lot of A-B testing. You found that there wasn't much return on investment. You got diminishing returns if you if you had the array much bigger than that. And so we built an auto-scaling mechanism that was based on consumers' experience. Then we took it one stage further. We said, okay, how much revenue did we lose across the 24 hours? This means how many people would have stayed on the site but actually bounced out? And based on the ARPU, we can compute the lost revenue. And so if you're an engineer, you can do that, but you probably don't want to share it with your CFO because that just gives him a whip to beat you up with. Instead, we came up with another metric. We said, hey, here's how much revenue we actually recovered. This is how much revenue 
revenue you would have lost had we not scaled, had we kept the array at its original size, here's how much revenue you would have lost. And we recovered all that for you. And now it's an attaboy. So when you're an engineer, just be careful what <laughs> metrics you share. So then what you can do is say, well, here's our return on investment. We actually invested in bursting into public cloud infrastructure in order to handle that increased load of traffic. And here, the black line, this is not to scale, but you know you have to scale this in order to make it visual. The black line shows this is the return on investment for that scaling algorithm. And you can actually use that to test different algorithms and see which ones work better for you and your particular business. So now we've talked about standard elasticity. I hazard that most public-facing platforms have some sort of system that looks like this. What is hyper-elasticity? Well, this, this is where systems are stretched beyond their elastic limit and maybe even to the breaking point. So we deal with what are called spike events. As we said, standard cloud elasticity can cope with slowly varying loads. And there you see, bouncing along day by day, it was doing really well. But what about the unexpected spike? Bang, September 25th, 26th, something crazy happened. So this particular platform is from a client of ours called Gather Films. They're in the business of crowdsourcing audiences for theatrical distribution. It's an amazing new platform, revolutionary. Instead of movies being pushed by the studios to your theater, instead consumers can request the movies to come to the theater. And through the platform, we give them the tools to crowdsource amongst their friends an audience sufficient to make that screening tip, much like in the way a Kickstarter project tips. And so through that, Gather Films was able to, this year, have the first movie that grossed a million dollars through crowdsourcing. This is great. So once that happened, many movies came to the platform for distribution. We found it worked really well for cause-driven documentaries and for celebrity movies with large fan followings. On the 23rd, we took on Pearl Jam's movie, PJ20. Pearl Jam put out three tweets, and here you see the normal auto-scaling algorithm blown to its breaking point, and I'm now going to talk about how we handled that. So let's slice through that, but not now on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. We actually dissect it into a minute-by-minute -minute basis. And here you can see the spike event. It was the most traffic we'd had on the site. It was quite devastating. Here is what the servers did. That the servers went up. We actually put a cap. We put a limit on the, the size the array can go to because, well, the CFO said, I'm not going to give you a blank check to completely you know, drain our bank account. Um, so we've got to put a limit in there. You're array can only grow this big. It grew to 60 really quickly because it said every minute it was going to double in size if it needed to. And so it got to 60, but it kind of got there a bit late. Well, first of all, this is what happened to the bounce rate. Dreadful. That's not good. So what happened? Well, the Linux boot time is up to 15 minutes on standard cloud platforms. So it's not good. But all that time when your array cannot respond, you're basically losing traffic because the bounce rate bangs up to 100%. But it's even worse than that because most cloud providers are still billing for an entire hour. So even if you wanted to handle a spike event, even if you had a trimmed down Linux instance and your stack was super light and you could respond in a timely manner, you only really need to handle the spike of about 20 minutes or so. Some spikes are even shorter than that. You're charged for an entire 60 minutes. Tom, I'm glad you're here because... Uh, this is important that um, maybe we recognize this hyper-elasticity problem and we figure out our options to solve that. Well, one option is faster booting nodes. There are actually lots of options, but I'm going to tackle the, the ones that the cloud providers can offer. So have a look at the Google Compute Engine. Here I'm comparing Google with EC2, and you can see Google's got some rapidly booting Linux nodes that can boot in record time compared with typical Amazon on nodes. And this is vitally important for handling the issue of hyper-elasticity. And then if you're able to respond fast to it, you want to be able to shrink when that spike goes away, because those spikes go away also very quickly. And so you don't want to be billed for the entire hour. Both Google and Windows uh, Azure offered sub-hour billing. In fact, I think Windows are down to one-minute billing. So this is the maturity that we see in cloud, in the same way that the mobile marketplace 
matured from, remember when it's five minute billing, three minute billing, they've all normalized to a one minute billing. I hear that in Europe, there's one provider that's even offering six second billing. So this is important. These two factors can help us handle hyper elasticity, faster booting nodes, sub hour billing. What are the results? Here is how we responded to those spike events in March. And I'm looking at two metrics here. Here you see a spike in visits and you see the bounce rate going up at the same time. You'll be glad to hear that in September, we implemented some hyper elasticity measures. And here you see the result, a spike, a massive spike in traffic, but the bounce rate actually went down. It was quite gratifying to see that in the space of six months, our engineering had paid off and the bounce rate goes down. So it is possible to build a system with that sort of twitch reflex that isn't going to drain the bank, but you need two things. From the cloud providers, you need faster booting nodes and you need sub-hour billing. Thank you very much.